evening is. My name is Lucy Byrne, I'm the Managing Director of Dot Arts, and I would like to welcome you to the secondary prize giving ceremony for the Dot Arts Schools Exhibition 2020 in the iconic live building. I would also like to welcome those of you who are watching our live stream today. A particular welcome to the Right Worshipful, the Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Roy Gladden, our guest judges, Dwayne John and Susan Coles, and all the talented young people whose work we're celebrating today. So why are we here? Dot Art Schools is an annual online inter-school art competition for year five and nine, culminating in an exhibition. This is our 10th year of the programme, and we are absolutely delighted to be celebrating this landmark birthday with you all, particularly as we have not been able to hold the event in person since 2019 due to the pandemic. We've now worked with over 9,000 children and young people since we began in 2012, and in this, our birthday year, an amazing 80 schools from across the Liverpool City region have taken part. Over 1,200 works were submitted online, and in March, our expert shortlisting panel picked the top three works per school, which you can see behind me on the slideshow. A public vote then took place throughout April to select the top piece from each school, which has been included in the exhibition that we'll see downstairs afterwards. So before I explain to you what will happen this afternoon, I would like to show you a very short film which we hope will demonstrate the impact that Dot Art Schools has had. So this is our second year in the Faculty of Education working with um, the Dot Art team. It's a project that's both um, exciting, innovative and allows schools to publicise and to show the art that the children and young people are creating. So we get involved in a lot of partnerships through the Faculty of Education. For us, it's about supporting the development of schools in a range of different ways. We are in a fortunate position to have a range of resources, to have a range of opportunities for our students, and we want to be able to extend those to, to partners. Dot Art Schools is an annual inter-schools art competition, which is um, uh, open to schools across Liverpool City region and near neighbours. It's specifically for Year 5s and Year 9s to showcase and celebrate their artwork. The idea behind it is also to encourage young people to understand creative career pathways or at least get a taster of that and to boost their confidence and their resilience and also give them a chance to express themselves and enjoy that. Dot Art Schools came from a local secondary school who approached us asking if we could champion and support, showcase the work of local students in a similar way that we were supporting local artists. From there, it's developed into uh, an amazing programme that has so far worked with and engaged over 9,000 students and works with around 100 schools every year across the Liverpool City region. I like to express myself in different ways and this is probably my favourite way to do it. It always feels very nice to sit down and just draw what's on my mind. It takes a lot of my brain because I think about a lot of stuff. It inspired me to do more drawings and paintings, any form of art. Um, I learned that um, when I'm drawing, um, you can do your, your own thing. You don't have to do what everyone like tells you to draw. You can like make your own imagination. But when we come to the point where we're planning the prize giving and the annual exhibition, that's when things get really exciting and fun. When I actually get to meet the young people who submitted the work, uh, who are the winners and runners-up um, and shortlisted children, there's nothing like that moment in my whole year. When we walk in the gallery and we see them arriving with their families and their teachers and the look of, of excitement and just pure pride on their face is brilliant. That's why I do the job, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> for that moment. I think it's important for the children to be involved in something that's not just school based. So I think in, they're all really eager to join in. Um, I think being involved in an organisation with Dot Art, like Dot Art is important because I think they can see naturally that as an artist, if it's your job, then your artwork is displayed and exhibited for other people to see. And I don't think children always relate that from what they learn as their experience in school. So I think Dot Art provides that for them. Yeah, my piece was called uh, A Mosaic Garden. And yeah, I really wanted to bring like bold, bright colors in because it was a very miserable time. People weren't 
um, feeling the best but when I was doing my piece of artwork I felt like very uplifted and motivated determined with all the bright colors it just made me feel a lot better in that hard time uh, I, if it makes me feel proud because I can sort of do what I want with it and nobody really mocks it or anything yeah because they can express themselves in it they can express their moods and it sort of can make them feel a bit happier we, f we feel the arts are, are very important as they're a big motivator for a lot of our pupils um, and art itself can be a, a vehicle for learning in that while they're actually enjoying the art they'll be learning communication skills, problem solving skills um, and hopefully develop skills and strategies that will help them um, when they leave here to be successful adults with autism. Absolutely recommend dot art for other schools. I think it's something that helps staff focus their teaching of art, helps pupils, um, yeah, I think it's a massively positive thing for the city. Right, so what happens now? In a minute, I'll be handing over to Dot Art School's project manager, Carolyn Murray, who will begin the presentation of certificates to all the shortlisted artists. We will then hear from Dwayne Chong of Grow Wellbeing about our optional theme for this year, protecting our environment, and hear who he has chosen as prize winners in this category. We will then hand over to Susan Coles to introduce herself and announce the overall winners and runners-up. Then we will hear from Dr. Helen O'Keefe, Associate Dean at Edgehill University, our fantastic project partners who make, help make Dot Art Schools possible. And finally, we will make our way downstairs to see the exhibition and have some group photos. So I'm handing over to Carolyn now. Thank you, Lucy. Hello, I'm so delighted that you're here. It's fabulous. It's so nice to actually be in a room with people. For a few years, we didn't, weren't sure what was gonna happen and we've really chuffed it has. Just before I um, go through the um, awards, I just want to make a point about photos and film. We are filming today and we are taking photographs and we will be sharing them later on. We'll set up a website where the photos will be available to, to download. So don't worry, we'll send that to the school. So ask them and nag them later and they'll, they'll tell you the link, okay? So um, what we're gonna do, I'm going to shout out the name of each school and the children's names for the first, second and thirds and they, we, when your names read out, if, if you're here, please come to the front and we'll direct you. Then you collect your certificate and you'll stay here for a school's group photo before you sit down. Okay? And before I begin saying them, I'm really sorry in advance if I pronounce it or name wrong. Please forgive me. So to begin, Alsop High School, Ryan Gascoigne, Nimra Ahmed and Ruby Reed. Beaumont Collegiate Academy, Melanie Kovacs, Joanna Whitaker, and Gracie Jones. <laughs> you from you from Beaumont? Brilliant. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. That's very brave. <laughs> Bell Reeve, FCJ Catholic College, Marion Garston, Adrian Tramarco, and Tatenda Chamuva. <laughs> Cardinal Heenan, Catholic High School. Ethan Jones, Louis Dentith, Alfredo Perishin Fleming. No, no teachers or students from Cardinal Heenan? No? Okay. Chilwall Abbey School, Orla, Caitlin, and Benin. Woo!
Chilwall Sports and Science Academy, Sam Reynard, Rocco Trapasso Amina, and Brooke Palfrey. No? Claire Mount, Specialist Sports College, Lewis Frankham, Callum Christensen, and Rhiannon Hughes. Dixon's Broad Green Academy, Elizabeth Kenny, Abigail Gimblet Hughes, and Ella Jo Watts. <laughs> Gattaca School, Neve Crozier, Fatima Ahmed, and Olivia Boswell. Greenbank High School, Nikita H, Alicia S, and Ola T. <laughs> Harmonize Academy, Ronnie Buchanan, Echel Butler, and Lewis Frith. <laughs> Holy Family Catholic High School, Charlie Hallmark, Ethan Kelly, and Caitlin Martin Lynch. Yes. King David High School, John Littlejohns, Nina Remwick Horn, and Isabel Usher. King's Leadership Academy Hawthorns, Linda Ferrier, Precious Abasagi, and Connor May. <laughs> King's Leadership Academy Liverpool. Layla Abu Ebrahim, Lama Al Saidi, Sarah Loredana. <laughs> Magull High School, Jake McCoy, Luke Hamilton, and James Culshaw. Notre Dame Catholic College, Ava Murphy, Polly Parks, Sandra Fanshack. Yeah. Rain Hill High School, Isla Brown, Oliver Darwin, Lloyd Jankowski. Yeah. Range High School, Emily Scott, Olga Frolova, Rosie Marr. St. Augustine of Canterbury, Roman Catholic High School, Josh Lally, Billy Murray, and Imogen Walsh. St. Hilda's CE High School, Charlie Button, Katrina Kozlerskate, and Alicia Cole. No. St. Julie's Catholic High School, Mae Dalton, 
Ruby Robson and Holly Ashton. St. Mary's Catholic College, Woolsey, Thomas Davis, Kira Blundell, Asia Ridgard. The Academy of St. Nicholas, Peter Okoro, Aidan Anderson, and Gerda Sixnanit. Nope. The Hammond School, Thomas Lee, Isaac Lancel Watkinson, and Kitty Knowles. The Heath School, Evie Jackson, Anya Pickering, and Dee Viles. The Prescott School, Ruby McHugh, Iris Byrne, and Zoe Wrong. The Sutton Academy, Mason Gibson, Jasmine Dunn, and Alexandrina. The Winsford Academy. Faith Douglas, Evie Taylor, and Jessica Wilkinson. <laughs> Upton Hall School, FCJ, Sasha Ratchford, Lucia Welters, and Grace Whitley. And last but not least, West Kirby School and College, Lucian, Daniel, and Liam. <laughs> when they just have their photos taken, I'm now going to hand over to our guest judge, Dwayne Chong, to introduce himself and announce the Protecting Our Environment theme, special for our 10th birthday, the winners and runners up from that theme. Over to you, Dwayne. Hello, I'm Dwayne Chong from Grow Wellbeing, which is a community enterprise which aims to connect uh, communities to the natural environment through forest school, through community gardening, and nature wellbeing. We're, we're delighted to be part of um, Dot Art's 10th um, birthday anniversary competition this year and to be a judge on the Protecting Your Environment theme. Um, it's so important today that um, children and young people are aware of the, the impact of climate change and the climate emergency. And the entries that, that I've seen really um, show how much the children and young people uh, understand the, their concerns and, uh, and how they've expressed that. Uh, the, the winners are... Um, in runner-up uh, position, Nina Rennick Horn from King David High School for Insects in the Environment.
And the winner is Eve O'Mahony from Bellarive. Well done. So, um, thank you, Dwayne. That's wonderful. We'll now hand over to our guest judge, Susan Coles, to introduce herself and announce the overall winners and runners-up. Over to you, Susan. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I've been judge here for a number of years now. I've lost count, actually. But it's so lovely to be here because we've been in this grey world of pandemics, like a wilderness, isn't it? So well done, Dot Art, because this is bringing people together and it's bringing art and young people and parents and carers and we're all here to celebrate something special. And um, if you're a teacher here, just put your hand up for a minute, please. Thank you. Right, because you're the stars tonight. Every time you um, pick up a newspaper, you know, they think that you're on holiday all the time and that schools went and didn't do anything during the pandemic. And we all know that you did. We know that schools were physically active, schools were home learning and teaching and people were juggling things. And I think that teachers had to develop as many arms as an octopus to keep everything going. And I would like a round of applause for all of those teachers. <laughs> And if you, uh, the mums and dads and your kids were messing up your kitchen table doing their um, art homework, then we also should be applauding you as well, but we haven't got time for that. But there's lots of research now about the impact of the pandemic on all of us and our lives and our mental health, etc. And educationally, the subjects most affected have been the arts, because you're not going to be able to do your drama and your dance at home in the same way that you're in school. And if you're in school, you're in your bubbles, you weren't allowed to share equipment, everything had to be wiped down and cleaned and isolated. It just really cut all the corners around being creative. And when you went back to school, the government decided that you needed to catch up. And all of that money has really gone into numeracy and literacy at the expense of subjects like the arts. And I think that is absolutely criminal. And by the way, I am on Twitter as the art criminal. There is a connection here. I am an art activist and an art educator, and I work in this country and internationally, and I will fight for the right for children always to do art. So I want you to think about this today, right? I work a lot with teachers. They say children have come back. Things are different. Of course things are different. We've had two years of, of being isolated from our friendship groups, from our social gatherings, from everything that was normal, from our routines. And we haven't been allowed to use our hands. We haven't been allowed to shake hands, hug people, touch things. You know, we've been hiding our faces and our expressions behind masks. So we have become a nation who use probably one finger and prod a tablet or a phone. And we have lost the ability to use these incredible tools. And what times these are that we live in, and what our children do with their art, right? They get a voice, and the voice is for their emotions, and the voice is their observations and a record of these times that we live in. We have a government who don't value the arts in schools, but they do value the worth to the economy. Before COVID, one in 12 jobs in this country were in the creative and cultural industries. There is a missing link between education and the treasury. We've had many Secretary of States for Education. The name Gavin Williamson will ring a bell with a few people. He is now Sir Gavin Williamson. He called university arts degrees low value. But we know better and we don't give up because history is on our side as human beings. Think about your hands, right? They're just there. 
You've been using them. You've been shopping, right? You've been driving. You've been putting your hands in your pockets. You've been whatever. Think about your hands, right? You know, just for a few minutes, even join two hands together. Hold them, right? Stroke. Explore one hand with the other hand. Feel your texture. Feel your skin. Feel the shape, the strength. When you put your two hands together, they're amazing. What an incredible gift. And that's what separates us from other primates, right? That's why we have developed this ability to be creative and innovative and have risen up to the world that we live in now. So play and art insist on our thinking and imagining and we create with our hands before we put anything into words, what we're thinking, what we're doing. So from the beginning of time, the earliest cave art, 39,000 years ago, is when adults in the caves put their children on their shoulders the children held their hands up against the cave wall and the adults sprayed pigment that they'd made from stones and rocks and flowers and animal fat. And those paintings still exist today. We have been making our mark for 38,000 years and we've been doing it through touch, the most essential haptic sense, non-verbal communication. That's how animals and people communicate, how they connect with each other. When a baby is developing in the womb, it actually explores with its hands. When a baby is born, it's the primary instrument of exploration and communication, if you start to think about it, the finger pointing, the finger grasping. And you then go to the art room, right? Young children or young adults that are here, think about all the things you do in the art room, right, that you've never thought about. You rip and you tear and you cut and you carve and you press and you layer and you collage and you paint and you mold and you push and you squeeze, brush, sew, stitch, knit, sketch, draw, feel, press, fold, twist, bend, stick, weave, all of these different things. And you understand shape and you understand three dimensions because you're doing that. The power is in your hands. There is a very famous professor of medicine called Dr. Roger Kneeborn, works in Imperial College in London. He trains surgeons. He now has to stop training these highly qualified people who come to him from medical college because they cannot use their hands. So he has to take them back to drawing, to observation, to a dressmaker, to a potter to make something out of clay because you wouldn't want them stitching you up. Recently, the British Heart Foundation did a survey in this country that found out that only 40% of the population can sew a button on. Who's sitting there thinking, oh God, I'm one of the 60% that can't. So we need to be immersed now in what we couldn't do in the lockdowns through the art and the arts, moving about, playing the musical instruments, dancing, drama, set your hands free. So we've got a celebration today of art by young artists with that ability to explore. And I used a quote at the primary session earlier today, I'll use now. There's a, a wonderful American writer who's no longer with us called Toni Morrison. And she said that in times like this, when the world is fractured, I mean, we have a war going on in Europe. Don't forget that as well. We have the aftermath of a pandemic. She said, this is precisely the time when artists go to work because they can shine a light in the darkness. And don't lament the break, because nothing new would be built if things were never broken. Every single person here today who's got their art in this exhibition is a winner, right? Or if you've seen your work on the slides today, you're a winner. You're a winner because you're in this unique building you have exhibited here. I haven't done that. I'm quite jealous, actually. So we're going to look at our chosen final winners of the winners. My criteria for choosing them was creativity, originality, visual impact, and message, right? So we're going to start with the runners-up and then the overall winner. So that's this piece of paper now. So our runner-up, number one, 
is a photograph. It's a beautiful photograph. I would hang that on, on my wall. It is the beach, the bench, sorry, Nikita H. Greenbank High School. Runner up number two is called Help. That's that little voice in everybody's head, isn't it? At the end of the pandemic. And it's really quite inspirational, actually. It's by Charlie Button, St. Hilda's CE High School. Now, because we don't have those winners here tonight, there will be contact from Dot Arts and they will get their prizes. But the overall winner is um, a picture you'll see tonight that you will go back to all the time because it's got such character. And it's called Rick the Otter. <laughs> and it's... <laughs> and it's, it's by Jake McCoy. That is Jake. Maghull High School, and the other good news is his winning school, the winning school also wins a week exhibition of student art at the Mansion House in Calderstons Park. They also win a Cass Art voucher to spend on materials. Just think of the print sticks you can get with that. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So if we have a teacher here tonight from Maghull, <laughs> we don't, but we have Chief. So thank you, and well done, Jake. Jake, I would hang that up in my sitting room, by the way. I might make you an offer later. Thank you so much, Susan. And I will say as well, the winning school also wins an aspiration day with Edgehill University, including coach travel to go and uh, get a taste of university life as well. And we'll post all those um, uh, prizes out to the school. Uh, so congratulations to, again to all our overall winners. Thank you very much. So before we go any further, can I please ask um, Jake and the three winner, the two winners from the Protecting Our Environment category to go with Carolyn and our photographer Jasmine now to have their individual photographs taken um, outside and we'll follow them down in a little minute when we've finished here. So if the four of you can, uh, three of you, sorry, can just uh, follow now. Yes, you're done. Thank you, Roy. Um, right, and for now, I would like to hand over to Dr. Helen O'Keefe, Associate Dean of Edge Hill University, to say a few words about the university and our partnership everyone and congratulations to everybody who's taken part and to all our winners this afternoon. Um, we're very proud and we're very honoured to be part of the DOT Art School competition again this year. This has been another challenging school year which has once again seen children and young people massively impacted by the effects of the pandemic. It's been an absolute privilege to work with Lucy, Carolyn and the team to support the successful running of the awards again this year and I'm even more delighted that we're actually here in person. It feels a long time since we've managed to do that. And to celebrate the incredible artists in our schools, but also to recognize a little anniversary, which they've been quite quiet about, that it's 10 years of Dot Art competition this year. So I think a round of applause to Lucy and the team for 10 years. <laughs> the talent I've seen displayed in every piece of work submitted has been absolutely breathtaking and is every single year. And the care and thought that's gone into that work is very clear to see. And I think you should all be extremely proud of what you've achieved, not just the winners, but absolutely everybody. The optional theme this year has been protecting the environment. And some of the work on display today downstairs and submitted to the competition shows how passionately our young people feel about their world and demonstrates to each of us why it's so important we stand up for the world we live in and its future. All the artwork on display today and throughout the competition just shows how important art and the arts are. It gives us space to express ourselves and have our voices heard. It brings together people and ideas and supports us to connect to each other and to understand this very complicated world that we all live in. Research tells us that making and looking at art has long-term effects like boosting your brain function 
I look at a lot of art and my brain does not appear yet to be boosted, but I continue to hope that that will happen. And to boost our immune systems, as well as contributing positively to our mental and to our emotional health. And we have really seen that over the last couple of years. It helps us to express feelings, and some of the pictures downstairs really show that. And to work through our emotions and our experiences. And I hope that everyone who has submitted work to the competition has benefited from that in some way. Today we're being filmed by our media team from Ed Hill. They are one of many ways that we support and develop creativity for our students. Many go on to work in studios, in film, media, or in television. And we are committed to developing the skills and talents of everyone who comes to study at the university. And I can see that each and every one of you today has the potential to go on and achieve amazing things, given the creativity in your artworks on display here at the Royal Liver Building. So once again, huge congratulations to you from all of us at the university. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, just time for some very quick thank yous. Um, first of all, to our partners, Edgehill University, who have not only supported us all year round, but have today filmed and live streamed our event to make sure it's even more accessible and ensure as many people as possible get to be a part of this celebration. To CBRE Liverpool and Relish for allowing us to use your amazing spaces here for this event and downstairs for the exhibition. To Service Graphics, providing all our lovely print materials. Our Dot Art Schools champions for their generosity in helping to make the programme happen. CassArt, Makebank, Farm Urban, Grow Wellbeing, The Reader and Edgehill University for donating prizes. Our shortlisting judges, Tony Heaton, artist and chair of Shape Arts. Amber Akanu, for artist and founder of Rooted. Sandra Penketh from National Museums Liverpool. Matthew Pateman of Edgehill University. Louise Hesketh of Curious Minds. And Kirsty Thomas of Makebank. Our wonderful Edgehill interns, Laura, Isabel and Nessa. Our team of fantastic volunteers. Our guest judges, Dwayne Chong and Susan Coles the Right Worshipful Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Roy Gladden, and last but not least, the Dot Art Schools Project Manager, Carolyn Murray, whose hard work has made this all possible and is not here to hear me say that because she's out corralling children outside. So we are almost done, uh, but I have two very special things to tell you about first. So teachers, I know there are quite a lot of teachers in the room. Do you know about Teacher's Corner? So Teacher's Corner is something we would encourage you to submit your work to. It's a celebration of creativity, which was extended to all of those working in education across the country during the COVID-19 pandemic. We wanted to demonstrate to students that teachers are artists too, as well as highlighting the importance of staying creative during difficult times. The response last year was fantastic, with almost 50 teachers sub um, submitting an amazing array of artworks. And this year you have until the 8th of August, so just a bit into the summer holidays, to submit your work, and the exhibition will open online in September. So if you're interested, please do just go to the Dot Art School's website and the news page, you'll find out more on there. And then the final thing, I'd like to ask for your help. If you've been impressed by what you've seen here today and the amazing artworks you'll view in the exhibition in a minute, we would love to help for you to consider becoming a Dot Art School's hero. This is our new micro subscription program, which lets you support our vital work for just five pounds a month. We are a very small, unfunded social enterprise which relies on the generosity of partners and supporters to deliver this program year on year. Please pick up a flyer on your way out or take a look at the Dot Art School's website for more information. Right, so I will stop talking now. It is time to see the exhibition and we're going to ask you to make your way out, but we have a drone waiting outside and we would love to take a big group photo of everybody on the back steps of the Liver Building, so the Riverside. So before, on your way out to see the exhibition, if you can make your way down to the ground floor and go out to the doors on your left and gather on the big steps, there's a drone waiting. So thank you so much for coming and sharing your celebration of young artists' work. Please do add your comments to our post-it wall and we hope to see you next together. Thank you.